everyone. I hope you guys all enjoyed your holidays, Christmas, New Year's. I know it's been a little bit since I posted for Fifty Shades Freed. Um, there was, unfortunately, construction going on outside my house, and it was so loud that no room in my house could I uh, set up to read. It was just overbearing. They were working on the concrete. They were, like, jackhammering it up and... It was so loud, so I apologize, but here I am, and I will be posting this video, um, so hopefully you guys will be excited, and forgive me <laughs> for the delay, but I didn't want to read with all that noise in the background, because then you, it would have just overshadowed what I was reading. Um, but anyway, I really hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I know that I did, and thank you all so much for all your comments, and uh, I love you guys so much, and without further ado, Fifty Shades Free by E.L. James. Chapter 6. Do you have anything in mind? Christian murmurs, pinning me with his bold gaze. I shrug, suddenly breathless and agitated. I don't know if it's the chase, the adrenaline, my earlier bad mood. I don't understand, but I want this, and I want it badly. A puzzled expression flits across Christian's face. Kinky fuckery? He asks, and his words a soft caress. I nod, feeling my face flame. Why am I embarrassed by this? I have done all manner of kinky fuckery with this man. He's my husband, damn it. Am I embarrassed because I want this and I'm ashamed to admit it? My subconscious glares at me. Stop overthinking. Carte Blanche? He whispers the question, eyeing me speculatively, as if he's trying to read my mind. Carte Blanche? Holy fuck. What will that entail? Yes, I murmur nervously, as excitement blooms deep inside me. He smiles a slow, sexy smile. Come, he says, and tugs me toward the, the, toward the stairs. His intention is clear. Playroom. At the top of the stairs, he releases my hand and locks the playroom door. The key is on the Yes Seattle keychain that I gave him not so long ago. After you, Miss Gray, he says, and swings the door open. The playroom smells reassuringly familiar, of leather and wood and fresh polish. I blush, knowing that Miss Jones might have been in here cleaning while we were away on our honeymoon. As we enter, Christian switches on the lights, and the dark red walls are illuminated with soft, diffused light. I stand gazing at him, anticipation running thick and heavy through my veins. What will he do? He locks the door and turns, inclining his head to one side. He regards me thoughtfully and then shakes his head, amused. What do you want, Anastasia? He asks gently. You? My response is breathy. He smirks. You've got me. You've had me since you fell into my office. Surprise me then, Mr. Gray. His mouth twists with repressed humor and carnal promise. As you wish, Miss Gray. He folds his arms and raises one long index finger to his lips while he appraises me. I think we'll start by riding you of your, ridding you of your clothes. He steps forward, grasping the front of my sh short denim jacket. He opens it and pushes it over my shoulder so it falls to the floor. He clasps the hem of my black camisole. Lift your arms. I obey and he peels it off my, over my head. Leaning down, he plants a soft kiss on my lips, his eyes glowing with an alluring mix of lust and love. The camisole joins my jacket on the floor. Here. I whisper, gazing nervously at him as I remove the hair tie from around my wrist and hold it up for him. He stills and his eyes widen briefly but give nothing away. Finally, he takes the small band. Turn around, he orders. Relieved, I smile to myself and oblige immediately. Looks like we've overcome that little hurdle. He gathers my hair and braids it quickly and efficiently before fastening it with the tie. He tugs the braid, pulling my head back. Good thinking, Miss Gray. He whispers in my ear, then nips my earlobe. Now turn around and take your skirt off. Let it fall to the floor. He releases me and steps back as I turn to face him. Not taking my eyes off his, I unbutton the waistband of my skirt and ease the zipper down. The full skirt fans out and falls to the floor, pulling at my feet. Step out from your skirt, he orders. As I turn toward him, he kneels soft, swiftly down in front of me and grasps my right ankle. Deftly, he unbuckles my sandals one at a time while I lean forward, balancing myself with one hand on the wall under the pegs that used to hold all the whips, crops, and paddles. The flogger and the riding crop are the only implements that remain. I eye them cur with curiosity. Will he use those? Having removed my shoes so I'm just in my lacy bra and panties, Christian sits back on his heels, gazing up at me. You're a fine sight, Miss Gray. Suddenly, he kneels up, grabs my hips, and pulls me forward, burrowing, burrowing his nose in the apex of my thighs. 
and you smell of you and me and sex. He says, inhaling sharply, it's intoxicating. He kisses me through my lace panties while I gasp at, my, at his words, my insides liquefying. He's just so naughty. Gathering up my clothes and sandals, he stands in one swift, graceful move like an athlete. Go and stand beside the table. He says calmly, pointing with his chin. Turning, he strides over to the museum chest of wonder. He glances back and smirks at me. Face the wall. He commands. That way you won't know what I'm planning. We aim to please Miss Gray and you wanted a surprise. I turn away from him, listening acutely, my ears suddenly sensitive to the slightest sound. He's good at this, building my expectations, stoking my desire, making me wait. I hear him put my shoes down and I think my clothes on the chest, followed by the telltale clatter of his shoes as they drop to the floor, one at a time. Hmm. Love, barefoot Christian. A moment later, I hear him pull open a drawer. Toys. Oh, I love, love, love this anticipation. The drawer closes and my breathing spikes. How can the sound of a drawer render me a quivering mess? It makes no sense. The subtle hiss of the sound system coming to life tells me it's going to be a musical interlude. A lone piano starts, muted and soft, and mournful chords fill the room. It's not a tune I know. The piano is joined by an electric guitar. What is this? A man's voice speaks, and I can just make out the words, something about not being frightened of dying. Christian pads leisurely toward me, and his bare feet slapping on the wooden floor. I sense him behind me as a woman starts to sing, wail, sing. Rough, you say, Miss Gray? He breathes in my left ear. Hmm. You must tell me to stop if it's too much. If you say stop, I will stop immediately. Do you understand? Yes. I need your promise. I inhale sharply. Shit. What is he going to do? I promise, I murmur breathlessly, recalling his words from earlier. I don't want to hurt you, but I'm more than happy to play. Good girl. Leaning down, he plants a kiss on my naked shoulder, then hooks a finger beneath my bra strap and traces a line across my back beneath the strap. I want to moan. How does he make the slightest touch so erotic? Take it off, he whispers in my ear, and hurriedly I oblige and let my bra fall to the floor. His hands skim down my back, and he hooks both of his thumbs into my panties and slides them down my legs. Step, he orders. Once more I do as I'm told, stepping out of my panties. He plants a kiss on my backside and stands. I'm going to blindfold you so that everything will be more intense. He slips an airline mask, eye mask over my eyes, and my world is plunged into darkness. The woman singing moans incoherently, a haunting, heartfelt melody. Bend down and lie flat on the table. His words are softly spoken. No. Without hesitation, I bend over the side of the table and rest my torso on the highly polished wood, my face flush against the hard surface. It's cool against my skin, and it smells vaguely of beeswax with a citrus tang. Stretch your arms up and hold onto the edge. Okay. Reaching forward, I clutch the far edge of the table. It's quite wide, so my arms are fully extended. If you let go, I will spank you. Do you understand? Yes. Do you want me to spank you, Anastasia? Everything south of my waist heightens deliciously. I realize I've wanted this since he threatened me during lunch, and neither the car chase nor our subsequent intimate encounter has stated this need. Yes. My voice is, ho is a hoarse whisper. Why? Oh, do I have to have a reason? I shrug. Tell me, he coaxes. Um, and from out of nowhere, he smacks me hard. Ah! I cry out. Hush now. He gently rubs my behind where he's hit me. Then he leans over me, his hips digging into my backside, plants a kiss between my shoulder blades, and trails kisses across my back. He's taken his shirt off, so his chest hair tickles my back, and his erection presses against me through the rough fabric of his jeans. Open your legs, he orders. I move my legs apart, wider. I groan and spread my legs wider. Good girl, he breathes. He traces his finger down my back, along the crack between my buttocks and over my anus, which shrinks at his touch. We're going to have... We're going to have... Some fun with this, he whispers. Fuck. His finger continues down over my perineum and slowly slides into me. I see you're very wet, Anastasia. From earlier or from now? I groan and he eases his finger in and out of me, over and over. I push back on his hand, relishing the intrusion. Oh, Anna, I think it's both. I think you'd love being here, like this, mine. I do, oh, I do. He withdraws his finger and smacks me hard once more. Tell me, he whispers, his voice hoarse and urgent. Yes, I do, I whimper. He smacks me hard once more, so I cry out, then sticks two fingers inside me. He withdraws them immediately, spreading the moisture up over and around my anus. What are you going to do, I ask, breathless. Oh my, is he going to fuck my ass? It's not what you think, he murmurs reassuringly. I told you, one step at a time with this baby.
I hear the quiet spurt of some liquid, presumably from a tube. Then his fingers are massaging me there, again, lubricating me, there. I squirm as my fear collides with my excitement of the unknown. He smacks me once more, lower, so he hits my sex. I groan. It feels so good. Keep still, he says, and don't let go. Uh, this is lube. He spreads some more on me. I try not to wiggle beneath him, but my heart is pounding, my pulse hay haywire, as desire and anxiety pump through me. I've wanted to do this to you for some time now, Anna. I groan, and I feel something cool, metallically cool, run down my spine. I have a small present for you here, Christian whispers. An image from our show and tell springs to mind. Holy crap, a butt plug. Christian runs it down the parting between my buttocks. Oh my, I'm going to push this inside you very slowly. I gasp, anticipation and anxiety charging through me. Will it hurt? No, baby, it's small. Once it's inside you, I'm going to fuck you real hard. I practically convulse, bending over me. He kisses me once more between my shoulder blades. Ready, he whispers. Ready? Am I ready for this? Yes, I mutter quietly, my mouth dry. He runs another finger down past my ass and premium and slips it inside me. Fuck, it's his thumb. He cups my sex and his fingers gently caress my clitoris. I moan. It feels good. And gently, while his fingers and thumb work their magic, he pushes the cold plug slowly into me. Ah. Uh. I groan loudly at the unfamiliar sensation, my muscles protesting at the intrusion. He s circles his thumb inside me and pushes the plug harder, and it slips in easily. And I don't know if it's because I'm so turned on or if he's distracted me with his expert fingers, but my body seems to accept it. It's heavy and strange there. Oh, baby. And I can feel it, where his thumb swirls inside me, and the plug presses against... Oh, ah. Uh. He slowly twists the plug, eliciting a long, drawn-out moan from me. Christian! I mumble his name a garbled mantra as I adjust to the sensation. Good girl, he murmurs. He runs his free hand down my side until it reaches my hip. Slowly, he withdraws his thumb, and I hear the telltale sign of his zipper opening. Grasping my other hip, he pulls me back and parts my legs farther, his foot pushing against mine. Don't let go of the table, Anna, he warns. No, I gasp. Something rough? Tell me if I'm too rough, understand? Yes, I whisper, and he slams into me and pulls me onto him at the same time, jolting the plug forward, deeper. Fuck! I cry out. He stills, his breathing harsher in my pants. My panting matches his. I try to assimilate all the sensations, the delicious fullness, the tantalizing feeling that I'm doing something forbidden, the erotic pleasure that spirals outward from deep within me. He pulls gently on the plug. Oh my! I moan, and I hear his sharp intake of breath. A pure gasp. Of ple a, a gasp of pure, unadulterated pleasure. It heats my blood. Have I ever felt so wanton, so... Again, he whispers. Yes. Stay flat, he orders. He eases out of me and rams into me again. Oh, I wanted this. Yes, I hiss. And he picks up the pace, his breathing more labored, matching my own as he thrashes into me. Oh, Anna, he gasps. He moves one of his hands from my hips and twists the plug again, pull tugging it slowly, pulling it out and pushing it back in. The feeling is indescribable, and I think I'm going to pass out on the table. He never misses a beat as he takes me again and again, moving strong and hard inside me, my insides tightening and quivering. Oh, fuck, I moan. This is going to rip me apart. Yes, baby, he hisses. Please, I beg him, and I don't know what for, to stop, to never stop, to twist the plug again. My insides are tightening around him and the plug. That's right, he breathes, and he slaps me hard on my right buttock, and I come again and again, falling, falling, spinning, pulsing around and around, and Christian gently pulls the plug out. Fuck! I scream, and Christian grabs my hips and climaxes loudly, holding me still. The woman is still singing. Christian always puts songs on repeat in here. Strange. I'm curled in his arms on his lap, our legs tangled together with my head resting against his chest. We're on the floor of the playroom by the table. Welcome back, he says, peeling the blindfold off me. I blink as my eyes adjust to the muted light. Tipping my chin back, he plants a soft kiss on my lips, his eyes focused on and anxiously searching mine. I reach up to caress his face. He smiles. Well, did I fulfill the brief? He asks, amused. I frown. Brief? You wanted rough, he says gently. I grin because I just can't help it. Yes, I think you did. He raises his eyebrows and grins back at me. I'm very glad to hear it. You look thoroughly well-fucked and beautiful at this moment. He caresses my face, his long fingers stroking my cheek. I feel it, I purr. He reaches down and kisses me tenderly, his lips soft and warm and giving against mine. You never disappoint. He leans back to gaze down at me. How do you feel? His voice is soft with concern. Good, I murmur, feeling a flush creep across my face. 
Thoroughly well fucked, I smile shyly. Why, Miss Gray, you have a dirty, dirty mouth. Christian feigns an offended expression, but I can hear his amusement. That's because I'm married to a dirty, dirty boy, Mr. Gray. He grins a ridiculously stupid grin, and it's infectious. I'm glad you're married to him. He gently takes hold of my braid, lifts it to his lips, and kisses the end with reverence, his eyes glowing with love. Oh my, did I ever have a chance of resisting this man? I reach for his left hand and plant a kiss on his wedding ring, a plain platinum band matching my own. Mine, I whisper. Yours, he responds. He curls his arms around me and presses his nose into my hair. Shall I run you a bath? Hmm, only if you join me in it. Okay, he says. He sets me onto my feet and stands up beside me. He's still wearing his jeans. Will you wear your, er, other jeans? He frowns down at me. Other jeans? The ones you used to wear in here. Those jeans, he murmurs, blinking with perplexed surprise. You look very hot in them. Do I? Yeah, I mean, really hot. He smiles shyly. Well, for you, Miss Gray, maybe I will. He bends to kiss me, then grabs the small bowl on the table that contains the butt plug, the tube of lubricant, the blindfold, and my panties. Who cleans these toys? I ask as I follow him over to the chest. He frowns at me as if not understanding the question. Me? Miss Jones? What? He nods, amused and embarrassed, I think. He switches off the music. Well, um... Your subs used to do it. I finish his sentence. He gives me an apologetic shrug. Here. He hands me his shirt and I put it on, wrapping it around myself. His scent still clings to the linen and my charge in about blood plug washing is forgotten. He leaves the items on the chest. Taking my hand, he unlocks the playroom door, then leads me out and downstairs. I follow him meekly. The anxiety, the bad mood, the thrill, fear, and excitement of the car chase have all gone. I'm relaxed, finally sated and calm. As we enter our bathroom, I yawn loudly and stretch, at ease with myself for a change. What is it? Christian asks as he turns on the faucet. I shake my head. Tell me, he asks softly. He spills jasmine bath oil into the running water, filling the, t the room with its, scent, with its sweet, sensual scent. I flush. I just feel better. He smiles. Yes, you've been in a strange mood today, Miss Gray. Standing, he pulls me into his arms. I know you're worrying about these recent events. I'm sorry you're caught up in them. I don't know if it's a vendetta, an ex-employee, or a business rival. If anything were to happen to you because of me. His voice drops to a pained whisper. I curl my arms around him. What if something happens to you, Christian? I voice my fear. He gazes down at me. We'll figure this out. Now let's get you out of this shirt and into the bath. Shouldn't we talk to Sawyer? He can wait. He mess, his mouth hardens, and I feel a sudden pang of pity for Sawyer. What's he done to upset Christian? Christian helps me out of his shirt, then frowns as I turn to him. My breasts still bear faded bruises for, from the love bites he gave me during our honeymoon, but I decide not to tease him about them. I wonder if Ryan has caught up with the dodge. We'll see you after this bath. Get in. He holds his hand out for me. I climb into the hot, fragrant water and sit tentatively. Ow! My ass is tender, and the hot water makes me wince. Easy, baby, Christian warns, but as he says it, the uncomfortable sensation melts away. Christian strips and climbs in behind me, pulling me against his chest. I nestle between his legs, and we lie idle and content in the hot water. I run my fingers down his legs, and gathering my braid in one hand, he twirls it gently between his fingers. We need to go over the plans for the new house. Later this evening? Sure. That woman is coming back again. My subconscious gazes up from volume three of the complete works of Charles Dickens and Glowers. I'm with my subconscious, I sigh. Unfortunately, Gia Matteo's designs are breathtaking. I must get my things ready for work, I whisper. He stills. You know you don't have to go to work. He murmurs. Oh no, not this again. Christian, we've been through this. Please don't res resurrect that argument. He tugs my braids and my face tilts up and back. Just saying. He plants a ki soft kiss on my lips. I pull on sweatpants and a camisole and decide to fetch my clothes from the playroom. As I make my way across the hallway, I hear Christian's raised voice from his study. I freeze. Where the fuck were you? Oh shit. He's shouting at Sawyer. Cringing, I dash upstairs to the playroom. I really don't want to hear what he has to say to him. I still find shouty Christian intimidating. Poor Sawyer. At least I get to shout back. I gather up my clothes and Christian shoes, then notice the small porcelain bowl with the butt plug still on top of the museum chest. Well, I suppose I should clean it. 
I add it to the pile and make my way back downstairs. I glance nervously through the great room, but all is quiet. Thank heavens. Taylor will be back tomorrow evening, and Christian is generally calmer when he's around. Taylor is spending some quality time today and tomorrow with his daughter. I wonder idly if it'll ever get to, if I'll ever get to meet her. Miss Jones comes out of the utility room. We startle each other. Miss Gray, I didn't see you there. Oh, I'm Miss Gray now. Hello, Miss Jones. Welcome home and congratulations. She smiles. Please call me Anna. Miss Gray, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. Oh, why must everything change because just because I have a ring on my finger? Would you like to run through the menus for the week? Oh, would you like to run through the menus for the week? She asks, looking at me expectantly. Menus? Um, this is not a question I have ever anticipated being asked. She smiles. When I first worked for Mr. Gray, every Sunday evening I would run through the menus for the upcoming week with him and list anything he might need from the grocery store. I see. Shall I take those for you? She holds out her hands for my clothes. Oh, um, actually, I haven't finished with these. And they are hiding the bowl with the butt plug in it. I turn crimson. It's a wonder I can look Miss Jones in the eye. She knows what we do. She cleans the room. Geez, it's just weird having no privacy. When you're ready, Miss Jones, I'd be more than happy to run th through things with you. Thank you. We are interrupted by an ashen-faced Sawyer. He stalks out of Christian study and briskly crosses the great room. He gives us both a brief nod, not looking either of us in the eye and slinks into Taylor's study. I'm grateful for his intervention, as I don't wish to discuss menus or butt plugs with Miss Jones right now. Offering her a brief smile, I scurry back to the bedroom. Will I ever get used to having domestic staff at my beck and call? I shake my head. One day, maybe. I dump Christian's shoes on the floor and my clothes on the bed and take the bowl with the butt plug into the bathroom. I eye it suspiciously. It looks innocuous enough and surprisingly clean. I don't want to dwell on that, and I wash it quickly with soap and water. Will it be enough? Will that be enough? I'll have to ask Mr. Sexpert if it should be sterilized or something. I shudder at the thought. I like that Christian has turned the library over to me. It now houses an attractive white wooden desk I can work at. I take out my laptop and check my notes on the five manuscripts I read on our honeymoon. Yep, I have everything I need. Part of me dreads going back to work, but I can, ne I can never tell Christian that. He'd seize the opportunity to make me quit. I remember Roach's apologetic reaction when I told him I was getting married and to whom and how shortly afterward my position was confirmed. I realize now it was because I was marrying the boss. The thought is unwelcome. I am no longer acting editor. I am Anastasia Steele, editor. I haven't yet plucked up the courage to tell Christian that I am not going to change my name at work. I think my reasons are solid. I need some distance from him, but I know there will be a fight when he finally realizes that. Perhaps I should discuss this with him tonight. Sitting back in my chair, I start my final chore of the day. I glance at the digital clock on my laptop, which tells me it's, it's 7 in the evening. Christian still hasn't emerged from his study, so I have time. Taking the memory card out of the Nikon camera, I load it up into the laptop to transfer the photographs. As the pictures upload, I reflect on the day. Is Ryan back, or is, it, is he still on his way to Portland? Has he caught up with the mystery woman? Has Christian heard from him? I want some answers. I don't care that he's busy. I want to know what's going on, and I suddenly feel a tad resentful that he's keeping me in the dark. I rise, intending to go and comfort him in his study, confront him in his study. But as I do, the photos from the last few days of our honeymoon pop up on screen. Holy crap. Picture after picture of me, asleep, on many of my, so many of me asleep, my hair over my face or fanned out across the pillow, lips parted, shit, sucking my thumb? I haven't sucked my thumb for years. So many photos. I had no idea he'd taken these. There are a few candid long shots, including one of me leaning over the rail of the yacht, staring moodily into the distance. How did I not notice him taking this? I smile at the photos of me curled up beneath him and laughing, my hair flying as I struggle, fighting his tickling, tormenting fingers. And there's the one of him and me on the bed in the master cabin that he took at arm's length. I'm cuddled on his chest and he gazes at the camera, young, wide-eyed, in love. His other hand cups my head, and I'm smiling like a lovesick fool. But I cannot take my eyes off Christian. Oh, my beautiful man. His ruffled, just-fucked hair, his gray eyes glowing, his lips parted and smiling. My beautiful man who could not bear to be tickled, who could not bear to be touched just a short while ago, yet now he tolerates my touch. I must ask him if he likes it, or whether he lets me touch him for my pleasure rather than his. I frown, gazing down at his image, suddenly overwhelmed by my feelings for him. Someone out there wants to harm him. First Charlie Tango, then the fire at GEH, and that damned car chase. 
I gasp, putting my hand to my mouth as an involuntary sob escapes. Abandoning my computer, I leap up to find him, not to comfort, confront him now, just to check that he's safe. Not bothering to knock, I barge into his study. Christian is sitting at his desk and talking on the phone. He looks up in surprised annoyance, but the irritation on his face disappears when he sees it's me. So you can't enhance it further, he says, continuing his phone conversation, though he doesn't take his eyes off me. Without hesitation, I walk across, around his desk, and, in, and he turns in his chair to face me, frowning. I can tell he's thinking. What does she want? When I crawl in, onto his lap, his eyebrows shoot up in surprise. I put my arms around his neck and cuddle into him. Gingerly, he puts his arms around me. Um, yes, Barney. Could you hold on one moment? He cups the phone against his shoulder. Anna, what's wrong? I shake my head, tipping my chin up. He gazes into my eyes. I pull my head free from his hold, tuck it beneath his chin, and curl up smaller on his lap. Bemused, he wraps his free arm more tightly around me and kisses the top of my head. Okay, Barney, what, what were you saying? What were we saying? He continues, wedging the phone between his ear and his shoulder, and taps a key on his t laptop. A grainy black and white CCTV image appears on the screen. A man with dark hair wearing pale coveralls comes on the screen. Christian presses another key, and the man walks towards the camera. But with his head bowed, when the man is closer to the camera, Christian freezes the frame. He's standing in a bright white room with the, what looks like a long line of tall black cabinets to his left. This must be GEH server room. Okay, Barney, one more time. The screen springs to life. A box appears from around the head of the, main, the man in the CCTV footage, and suddenly we zoom in. I sit up, fascinated. Is Barney doing this? I ask quietly. Yes, Christian answers. Can you sharpen the picture at all? He says to Barney. The picture blurs, then refocuses moderately sharper on the man con consciously gazing down and avoiding the camera. As I stare at him, a chill of recognition sweeps up my spine. There is something familiar in the line of his jaw. He has scruffy, short black hair that looks odd and unkempt, and in the newly sharpened picture, I see an earring, a small hoop. Holy crap, I know who it is. Christian, I whisper. That's Jack Hyde. Chapter 7 You think? Christian asks, surprised. It's the line of his jaw, I point at the screen, and the earrings, and the shape of his shoulders. He's the right bill, too. He must be wearing a wig, or he's cut and dyed his hair. Barney, are you getting this? Christian puts the phone down on his desk and switches to hands free. You seem to have studied your ex boss, ex boss, ex boss in some gr in some detail, Miss Gray. He murmurs, sounding none too pleased. I scowl at him, but I'm saved by Barney. Yes, sir. I heard Miss Gray. I'm running face recognition software on all this digitized digitized CCTV footage right now. See where else this asshole? I'm sorry, ma'am. This man has been within the organization. I glance anxiously at Christian, who ignores Barney. Ex Barney's expeltive. He's studying the CCTV picture closely. Why would he do this? I ask Christian. He shrugs. Revenge, perhaps. I don't know. You can't fathom why some people behave the way they do. I'm just angry that you ever worked so closely with him. Christian's mouth presses into a hard, thin line, and he encircles my waist with his arm. We have the contents of his hard drive, too, sir. Barney adds. Yes, I remember. Do you have an address for Mr. Hyde? Christian says sharply. Yes, sir, I do. Alert Welch. Sure will. I'm also going to scan the, CC, the city CCTV and see if I can track his movements. Check what vehicle he owns. Sir. Barney. Barney can do all this? I whisper. Christian nods and gives me a small smile. A smug smile. What was on his hard drive? I whisper. Christian's face hardens and he shakes his head. Nothing much, he says, tight-lipped, his smile forgotten. Tell me. No. Was it about you or me? Me, he sighs. What sorts of things? About your lifestyle? Christian shakes his head and puts his index finger against my lips to silence me. I scowl at him, but he narrows his eyes and it's a clear warning that I should hold my tongue. It's a 2006 Camaro. I'll send the license details to Walsh, too, Barney says excitedly from the phone. Good. Let me know what, where else that fucker has been in my building and check this image against the one from his SIPs personnel file. Christian gazes at me skeptically. I want to be sure we have a match. Already done, sir. And Miss Gray, it's correct. And Miss Gray is correct. This is Jack Hyde. I grin. See, I can be useful. Christian rubs his hand down my back. Well done, Miss Gray. He smiles. His earlier rants are forgotten. To Barney, he says, "Let me know when you've t tracked all his movements at HQ. Also, check out any other GEH property he may have had access to, and let the security teams know so they can make another sweep of all the buildings." Sir, 
Thanks, Barney. Christian hangs up. Well, Miss Gray, it seems that you are not only decorative, but useful, too. Christian's eyes light up with wicked amusement. I know he's teasing. Decorative? I scoff, teasing him back. Very, he says quietly, pressing a soft, sweet kiss on my lips. You're much more decorative. You're much more decorative than I am, Mr. Gray. He grins and kisses me more forcefully, winding my braid around his wrist and wrapping his arms around me. When we come up for air, my heart is racing. Hungry? He asks. No, I am. What for? Well, food, actually. I'll make you something. I giggle. I love that sound. Of me offering you food? You're giggling. He kisses my hair, then I stand. So what would you like to eat, sir? I ask sweetly. He narrows his eyes. Are you being cute, Miss Gray? Always, Mr. Gray, sir. <laughs> he smiles a sphinx-like smile. I can, still, I can still put you over my knee, he murmurs seductively. I know, I grin. Placing my hands on the arms of his, of his office chair, I lean down and kiss him. That's one of the things I love about you, but stow your twitchy palm, you're hungry. He, he smiles his shy smile, and my heart clenches. Oh, Miss Gray, what am I going to do with you? You're going to answer my question. What would you like to eat? Something light. Surprise me, he says, mirroring my words from that playroom earlier. I'll see what I can do. I sashay out of his study and into the kitchen. My heart sinks when I see Miss Jones is there. Hello, Miss Jones. Miss Gray, are you ready for something to eat? Um, she is stirring something in a pot on the stove that smells delicious. I was going to make subs for Mr. Gray and me. She pauses for a heartbeat. Sure, she says. Mr. Gray likes French bread. There is some in the freezer cut to sub length. I'd be happy to make it for you, ma'am. I know, but I'd like to do this. I understand. I'll give you some room. What are you cooking? This is a bolognese sauce. It can be eaten any time. I'll freeze it. I'll freeze it. She smiles warmly and turns the heat right down. Um, so what does Christian like in a, um, sub? I frown, struck by what I've just said. Does Miss Jones understand the inference? <laughs> Miss Gray... Miss Gray, you could put just about anything in a sandwich, and as long as it's on French bread, he'll eat it. We grin at each other. Okay, thank you. I skip to the freezer and find the French bread cut to size in Ziploc bags. I place two of them on a plate, pop them in the microwave, and set it to defrost. Miss Jones has disappeared. I frown as I return to the fridge to search for ingredients. I suppose it will be up to me to set the per parameters by which Miss Jones and I will work together. I like the idea of cooking for Christian on the weekends. Miss Jones is more than welcome to do it during the week. The last thing I'll want to do when I come home from work is cook. Hmm. A bit like Christian's routine with his submissives. I shake my head. I mustn't overthink this. I find some ham in the fridge and in the crisper a perfectly ripe avocado. As I am adding a touch of salt and lemon to the mashed avocado, Christian emerges from his study with the plans for the new house in his hands. He puts them on the breakfast bar, saunters towards me, and wraps him his arms around me, kissing my neck. Barefoot and in the kitchen, he murmurs. Shouldn't that be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen? I smirk. He stills, his whole body tensing against me. Not yet, he declares, apprehension clear in his voice. No, not yet. He relaxes. On that we can agree, Miss Gray. You do want kids, though, don't you? Sure, yes, eventually, but I'm not ready to share you yet. He kisses my neck again. Oh, share? What are you making? Looks good. He kisses me behind my ear, and I know it's to distract me. A delicious tingle travels down my, my, my spine. Subs, I smirk, recovering my sense of humor. He smiles against my neck and nips my earlobe. My favorite. I poke him with my elbow. Miss Gray, Miss Gray, you wound me. He clutches his side as if in pain. Wimp, I mutter disapprovingly. Wimp, he utters in disbelief. He slaps my behind, making me yelp. Hurry with my food, wench, and later I'll show you how wimpy I can be. He slaps me placefully once more and goes to the fridge. Would you like a glass of wine? Oh, would you like a glass of wine, he asks. Please. Christian spreads Gia's plans out over the breakfast bar. She really has some spectacular ideas. I love her proposal to make the entire downstairs back wall glass, but... But, Christian prompts, I sigh, I don't want to take all the character out of the house. Character? Yes, what she is proposing is quite radical, but, well, I fell in love with the house as it is, warts and all. Christian's brow furrows as if this is an, is anthema to him. Anathema to him. I kind of like the way it is, I whisper. Is this going to make him mad? He regards me steadily. I want this house to be the way you want. Whenever, whatever you want. It's yours. 
I want you to like it too, to be happy in it too. I'll be happy wherever you are. It's that simple, Anna. His gaze holds mine. He's utterly, utterly sincere. I blink at him as my heart expands. Holy cow, he really does love me. Well, I swallow, fighting the small knot of emotion that catches in my throat. I like the glass wall. Maybe we could ask her to incorporate in it into the house a little more sympathetically. Christian grins. Sure, whatever you want. What about the plants for upstairs in the basement? I'm cool with those. Good. Okay, I steel myself to ask the million dollar question. Do you want to put in a playroom? I feel the oh-so-familiar flush creep up my face as I ask. Christian's eyebrows shoot up. Do you? He replies, surprised and amused at once. I shrug. Um, if you want. He regards me for a moment. Let's leave our options open for the moment. After all, this will be a family home. I'm surprised by the stab of disappointment I feel. I guess he's right. Although, when we are going to have... When- Although, when we are going to have a family, it could be years. Besides, we can, co we can improvise. I like improvising, I whisper. He grins. There's something I want to discuss. Christian points to the master bedroom, and we start a detailed discussion on bathrooms and separate walk-in closets. When we finish, it's 9.30 in the evening. Are you going back to work? I ask as Christian rolls up the plants. Not if you don't want me to, he smiles. What would you like to do? We could watch TV. I don't want to read, and I don't want to go to bed yet. Okay. Christian agrees willingly, and I follow him into the TV room. We have sat here three, maybe four times total, and Christian usually reads a book. He's not interested in television at all. I curl up beside him on the couch, tucking my legs beneath me and resting my head against his shoulder. He switches on the flat screen television with the remote and flicks mindlessly through the channels. Any specific drivel you want to see? You don't like TV much, do you? I mutter sardonically. He shakes his head. Waste of time. But I'll watch something with you. I thought we could make out. He whips his face to mine. Make out? He gazes at me as if I've th grown two heads. He stops the endless flicking, leaving the TV on overlit Spanish soap opera. Yes. Why is he so horrified? We could go to bed and make out. Oh, we could go to bed and make out. We do that all the time. When was the last time you made out in front of a TV? I ask, shy and teasing at the same time. He shrugs and shakes his head. Pressing the remote again, he flicks through another few channels before settling on an old episode of the X-Files. Christian? I've never done that, he says quietly. Never? No. Not even with Miss Robinson? He snorts. Baby, I did a lot of things with Miss Robinson. Making out was not one of them. He smirks at me and then narrows his eyes with amused curiosity. Have you? I flush. Of course. Well, kind of. What? With who? Oh, no. I do not want to have this discussion. Tell me, he persists. I gaze down at my knotted fingers. He gently covers my hands with one of his. When I glance up at him, he's smiling at me. I want to know so I can beat whoever it was to a pulp. I giggle. Well, the first time... The first time? There's more than one fucker? He growls. I giggle again. Why so surprised, Mr. Gray? He frowns briefly, runs a hand through his hair, and looks at me as if seeing me in a completely different light. He shrugs. I just am. I mean, given your lack of experience. I flush. I have certainly made up for that since I met you. You have, he grins. Tell me. I want to know. I gaze into patient gray eyes, trying to gauge his mood. Is this going to make him mad, or does he genuinely want to know? I don't want him sulking. He's impossible when he's sulking. You really want me to tell you? He nods slowly once, and his lips twitch with an amused, arrogant smile. I was briefly in Texas with mom and husband number three. I was in tenth grade. His name was Bradley, and he was my lab partner in physics. How old were you? Fifteen. And what's he doing now? I don't know. What base did he get to? Christian! I scold, and suddenly he grabs my knees, then my ankles, and tips me up, so I fall back onto the couch. He, he slides smoothly on top of me, trapping me beneath him, one leg between mine. It's so sudden that I cry out in surprise. He grabs my hands and raises them above my head. So this Bradley, did he get to first base? He murmurs, running his nose down the length of mine. He plants soft kisses at the corner of my mouth. Yes, I murmur against his lips. He releases one of his hands so that he can clasp my chin and hold me still while his tongue invades my mouth, and I surrender to his ardent kisses. Like this? Christian breathes when he comes up for air. No, nothing like that. I manage as all the blood in my body he heads south. Releasing my chin, he runs his hand down over my body and back up to my breast. Did he do this? Touch you like this? His thumb skims over my nipple, through my camisole, softly, repeatedly, and it hardens under his expert touch. No, I writhe beneath him. 
Did you get to second base? He murmurs in my ear. His hand moves down across my ribs, past my waist to my hip. He takes my earlobe between his teeth and gently tugs. No, I breathe. Mold, mold, Mulder blurts from the television something about the FBI's most unwanted. Christian pauses, leans up, and presses mute on the remote. He gazes down at me. What about Joe Schmo number two? Did he make it past second base? His eyes are smoldering hot, angry, turned on. It's difficult to say which. He shifts to my side and slides his hand beneath my sweatpants. No, I whisper, trapped in his carnal gaze. Christian smiles wickedly. Good. His hand cups my sex. No underwear, Miss Gray. I approve. He kisses me again as his fingers weave more magic, his thumb skimming over my clitoris, tantalizing me, as he pushes his index finger inside me with exquisite slowness. We're supposed to be making out, I groan. Christian stills. I thought we were. No, no sex. What? No sex. No sex, huh? He withdraws his hand from my sweatpants. Here. He traces my lips with his index finger, and I taste my slick saltiness. He pushes his finger into my mouth, mirroring what he was doing a moment earlier. Then he shifts so he's between my legs, and his erection pushes against me. He thrusts once, twice, and again. I gasp as the material of my sweatpants rubs in just the right way. He pushes once more, grinding into me. This what you want? He murmurs and moves his hips rhythmically, rocking against me. Yes, I moan. His hand moves back to concentrate on my nipple once more, and his teeth scrape along my jaw. Do you know how hot you are, Anna? His voice is hoarse as he rocks harder against me. I open my mouth to articulate a response and fail miserably, groaning loudly. He captures my mouth once more, tugging at my bottom lip with his teeth before plunging his tongue into my mouth again. He releases my other wrist, and my hands travel greedily up his shoulders and into his hair as he kisses me. When I pull on his hair, he groans and rises, raises his eyes to mine. Ugh. Do you like me touching you? I whisper. His brow furrows briefly as, he, as if he doesn't understand the question. He stops grinding against me. Of course I do. I love you touching me, Anna. I'm like a starving man in a banquet when it comes to your touch. His voice hums with passionate sincerity. Holy cow. He kneels between my legs and drags me up to haul off my top. I'm naked beneath it. Grabbing the hem of, my, of his shirt, he yanks it over his head and tosses it to the floor, then pulls me onto his, his kneeling lap, his arms clasped just above my behind. Touch me, he breathes. Oh my. Tentatively, I reach up and brush the tips of my fingers through the smattering of chest hair over his sternum, over his burn scars. He inhales sharply and his pupils dilate, but it's not with fear. It's a sensual response to my touch. He watches me intently as my fingers float delicately over his skin, first to one nipple, then the other. They pucker beneath my caress. Leaning forward, I plant soft kisses on his chest, and my hands move to his shoulders, feeling the hard, sculpted lines of sinew and muscle. Whoa, he's in good shape. I want you, he murmurs, and it's a green light to my libido. My fingers move into his hair, pulling his head back so I can claim his mouth, fire licking hot and high in my belly. He groans and pushes me back onto the couch. He sits up and rips off my sweatpants, undoing his fly at the same time. Home run, he whispers, and swiftly he fills me. Ugh! I groan, and he stills, grabbing my face between his hands. I love you, Miss Gray. He murmurs, and very slowly, very gently, he makes love to me until I come apart at the seams, calling his name and wrapping myself around him, never wanting to let him go. I lay sprawled on his chest. We're on the floor of the TV room. You know, we completely bypass third base. My fingers trace the line of his pectoral muscles. He laughs. Next time. He kisses the top of my head. I look up to stare at the television screen, where the end credits for the X-Files play. Christian reaches for the remote and switches the sound back on. You like that show? I ask. When I was a kid. Oh, Christian, as a kid, kickboxing and X-Files and no touching? You? He asks. Before my time. You're so young. Christian smiles fondly. I like making out with you, Miss Gray. Likewise, Mr. Gray. I kiss his chest and we lie silently watching the X-Files finish as the X-Files... And we lie silently watching as the X-Files finish and the commercials come on. It's been a heavily three weeks, a heavenly three weeks, car chases and fires and psycho ex bosses notwithstanding, like being in your own private bubble, I mutter dreamily. Hmm. Christian hums deep in his throat. I'm not sure I'm ready to share you with the rest of the world yet. Back to reality tomorrow, I murmur, trying to keep the melancholy from my voice. Christian sighs and runs his other hand through his hair. Security will be tight. I put my finger over his lips. I don't want to hear this lecture again. I know. I'll be good. I promise. 
which reminds me, I shift, propping myself up on my elbows to see him better. Why were you shouting at Sawyer? He stiffens immediately. Oh, shit. Because we were followed. That wasn't Sawyer's fault. He gazes at me levelly. They should never have let you get so far in front. They know that. I blush guiltily and resume my position, resting on his chest. It was my fault. I wanted to get away from them. That wasn't enough. Christian says suddenly, Kurt, this is not up for discussion, Anastasia. It's a fact, and they won't let it happen again. Anastasia? I am Anastasia when I'm in trouble, just like at home with my mother? Okay, I mutter, placating him. I don't want to fight. Did Ryan catch up with the woman in the Dodge? No, and I'm not convinced it was a woman. Oh, I look up again. Sawyer saw someone with his with their hair tied back, but it was a brief look. He assumed it was a woman. Now, given that you're identified, now that you uh, that you've identified the fucker, maybe it was him. He wore his hair like that. The disgust in Christian's voice is palpable. I don't know what to make of this news. Christian runs his hand down my naked back, distracting me. If anything happened to you, he murmurs, his eyes wide and serious. I know, I whisper. I feel the same about you. I shiver at the thought. Come, you're getting cold, he says, sitting up. Let's go to bed. We can cover third base there. He smiles a, le a less vicious smile, as mercutial as ever, passionate, angry, anxious, heck, sexy. My fifty shades. I take his hand and he pulls me to my feet, and without a stitch on, I follow him through the great room to the bedroom. The following morning, Christian squeezes my hand as we pull up outside Sip. He looks very much the powerful executive in his dark navy suit and matching tie, and I smile. He's not been this smart since the ballet in Monte, Chris Monte Carlo. The ballet in Monte Carlo. You know you don't have to do this, Christian murmurs, and I'm tempted to roll my eyes at him. I know, I whisper, not wanting Sawyer and Ryan to overhear me from the front of the Audi. He frowns and I smile. But I want to, I continue. You know this. I lean up and kiss him. His frown doesn't disappear. What's wrong? He glances uncertainly, uncertainly at Ryan and Sawyer as Ryan at Ryan as Sawyer climbs out of the car. I'll miss having you to myself. I reach up to caress his face. Me too, I kiss him. It was a wonderful honeymoon. Thank you. Go to work, Miss Gray. You too, Mr. Gray. Sawyer opens the door. I squeeze Christian's hand once more before I climb out onto the sidewalk. As I head into the building, I give him a little wave. Sawyer holds open the door and follows me in. Hi, Anna. Claire smiles from behind the reception desk. Claire, hello. I smile back. You look wonderful. Good honeymoon? The best, thank you. How's it been here? Old man Roach is the same, but security has been stepped up and our server room is being overhauled. But Hannah will tell you. Sure she will. I give Claire a friendly smile and head to my office. Hannah is my assistant. She is tall, slim, and ruthlessly efficient to the point that sometimes I find her a little intimidating. But she's sweet to me, in spite of the fact that she's a couple of years older. She has my latte waiting, the only coffee I let her get for me. Hi, Hannah, I say warmly. Anna, how was your honeymoon? Fantastic. Here, for you? I pop the small bottle of perfume I bought for her onto, the, her, de onto her desk, and she claps her hands with glee. Oh, thank you, she says enthusiastically. Your urgent correspondence is on your desk, and Roach would like, you, would like to see you at 10. That's all I have to report for now. Good, thank you, and thanks for the coffee. Wandering into my office, I rest my briefcase on my desk and gaze at the pile of letters. I have a lot to do. Just before 10, there's a timid tap on my door. Come in. Elizabeth looks around the door. Hi, Anna. I just wanted to say welcome back. Hey, I have to say, reading through all this correspondence, I wish I was back in the south of France. Elizabeth laughs, but her laughter is off, forced, and I cock my head to one side and gaze at her like Christian does to me. Glad you're back safely, she says. I'll see you in a few minutes at the meeting with Roach. Okay, I murmur, and she shuts the door behind her. I frown at the closed door. What was that about? I shrug it off. My email pings. It's a message from Christian. From Christian Gray. Subject, Aaron Wives. Date, August 22nd, 2011. 9.56 a.m. to Anastasia Steele. Wife. I sent the email below and it bounced, and it's because you haven't changed your name. Something you want to tell me? Christian Gray, CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. Attachment. From Christian Gray, F forward, subject, bubble, date, August 22, 22nd, tw 2011, 9.32 a.m. to Anastasia Gray. Miss Gray, love, co love covering all the bases with you. Have a great first day back. Miss our bubble already. X, Christian Gray, back in the real world, CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. Shit, I hit reply immediately. 
from Anastasia Steele. Subject, don't burst the bubble. Date, August 22nd, 2011, 9.58 a.m. To Christian Gray. Husband, I am all for a baseball metaphor with you, Mr. Gray. I want to keep my name here. I'll explain this evening. I'm going to, I'm going into a meeting now. Miss our bubble, too. P.S. Thought it, thought I had to use my Blackberry. Anastasia at Steele. Editor. Sip. This is going to be such a fight. I can feel it. Sighing, I gather up my papers for the meeting. The meeting lasts for two hours. All the editors are there, plus Roach and Elizabeth. We discuss personnel, strategy, marketing, security, and year end. As the meeting prog progresses, I know more and more uncomfortable. I grow more and more uncomfortable. There's a subtle change in how my colleagues are treating me, a distance and deference that wasn't there before I left for my honeymoon. And from Courtney, who heads up the nonfiction division, there's downright hostility. Maybe I'm just being paranoid, but it goes some way to explaining Elizabeth's odd greeting this morning. My mind drifts back to the yacht, then to the playroom, then to the R8 speeding away from the mystery dodge on I-5. Perhaps Christian's right. Perhaps I can't do this anymore. The thought is depressing. This is all... I've ever wanted to do. If I can't do this, what will I do? As I walk back to my office, I try to dismiss these dark thoughts. When I sit down at my desk, I quickly check my emails. Nothing from Christian. I check my Blackberry. Still nothing. Good. At least there's been no adverse reaction to my email. Perhaps we'll discuss this tonight per my request. I find that hard to believe, but ignoring an, my uneasy feeling, I open the marketing plan I was given at the meeting. As is our ritual, on a Monday, Hannah comes into my office with a plate for my packed lunch courtesy of Miss Jones, and we sit and eat our lunches together, discussing what we want to achieve during the week. She brings up, brings me up to date with the office gossip, too, which, considering I've been away for three weeks, is sorely lacking. As we're chatting, there's a knock on the door. Come in. Roach opens the door, and standing beside him is Christian. I'm momentarily struck dumb. Christian shoots me a blazing look and stalks in before smiling politely at Hannah. Hello, you must be Hannah. I'm Christian Gray. He says. Hannah scrambles to her feet and holds out her hand. Mr. Gray, ha, how nice to meet you. She stutters as they shake hands. Can I fetch you a coffee? Please, he says warmly. With a quick, puzzled glance at me, she scuttles out of the office past Roach, who stands as dumbstruck as me on the threshold of my office. If you'll excuse me, Roach, I'd like a word with Miss Steele. Christian hisses the S syll syllabantly, sarcastically. This is where he's, this is why he's here. Oh, shit. Of course, Mr. Gray, Anna. Roach mutters, shitting, shutting, bleh, shutting the door to my office as he departs. I recover my power of speech. Mr. Gray, how nice to see you. I smile far too sweetly. Miss Steele, may I sit down? It's your company. I wave at the chair Hannah vacated. Yes, it is. He smiles wolfishly at me, the smile not reaching his eyes. His tone is clipped. He's bristling with tension. I can feel it all around me. Fuck, my heart sinks. Your office is very small. He says as he sits down, facing my desk. It suits me. He regards me neutrally, but I know he's mad. I take a deep breath. This is not going to be fun. So what can I do for you, Christian? I'm just look looking over my assets. Your assets? All of them? All of them. Some of them need rebranding. Rebranding? In what way? I think you know. His voice is menacing, menacingly quiet. Please, don't tell me you have inter interrupted your day after three weeks away to come over here and fight with me about my name. I'm not a freaking asset. He shifts and crosses his legs. Not exactly. Fight. No. Christian, I'm working. Looked like you were gossiping with your assistant to me. My cheeks heat. We were going through our schedules, I snap, and you haven't answered my question. There's a knock on the door. Come in! I shout too loudly. Hannah opens the door and brings in a small tray, milk, jug, sugar bowl, coffee, and a French press. She's gone all out. She places the tray on my desk. Thank you, Hannah, I mutter, embarrassed that I have, have just shouted so loudly. Do you need anything else, Mr. Gray? She asks, all breathless. I want to roll my eyes at her. No, thank you. That's all. He smiles his dazzling, panty-dropping smile at her. She flushes and, flushes and exits simpering. Christian turns his attention to me now. Back to me. Now, Miss Steele. Where were we? You were really interrupting my work day to fight with me about my name. Christian blinks once, surprised, I think, by the vehemence in my voice. Deftly, he picks at an invisible piece of lint on his knee with long, skilled fingers. It's distracting. He's doing it on purpose. I narrow my eyes at him. I like to make the odd, impromptu visit. It keeps management on their toes. Wives in their place, you know? He shrugs, his mouth set in an arrogant line. Wives in their place? I have no idea... I had no idea you could spare the time, I snap. His eyes frost. Why don't you want to change your name here? He asks, his voice deathly quiet. Christian, do we have to discuss this now? 
I'm here, I don't see why not. I have a ton of work to do, having been away for the last three weeks. He, his eyes are cool and assessing, distant even. I marvel that he can appear so cold after last night, after the last three weeks. Shit, he must be mad, really mad. When will he learn not to overreact? Are you ashamed of me? He asks, his voice deceptively soft. No, Christian, of course not, I scowl. This is about me, not you. Jeez, he's exasperating sometimes. Silly, overbearing megalomaniac. How is that not about me? He cocks his head to one side, genuinely perplexed, some of his detachment slipping as he stares at me with wide eyes, and I realize that he's hurt. Holy fuck, I've hurt his feelings. Oh no, he's the last person I want to hurt. I have to make him see my logic. I have to explain my reasoning for my decision. Christian, when I took this job, I'd only just met you. I say patiently, struggling to find the right words. I didn't know you were going to buy the company. What can I say about that event in our brief history? His deranged reasons for doing so, his control freakery, his stalker tendency has gone mad, given completely free reign because he is so wealthy. I know he wants to keep me safe, but it's his ownership of SIP that is the fundamental problem here. If he'd never interfered, I could continue as normal and not have to face the disgruntled and whispered re recriminations of my colleagues. I put my head in my hands just to break eye contact with him. Why is it so important to you? I ask, desperately trying to hold on to my fraying temper. I look up at his impassive stare, his eyes luminous, giving nothing away, his earlier hurt now hidden. But even as I ask the question, deep down I know the answer before he says it. I want everyone to know that you're mine. I am yours. Look. I hold up my left hand, showing my wedding and engagement rings. It's, n it's not enough. Not enough that I married you? My voice is barely a whisper. He blinks, registering the horror on my face. Where can I go from here? What else can I do? That's not what I mean, he snaps and runs a hand through his overlong hair so that it flops onto his forehead. What do you mean? He swallows. I want your world to begin and end with me, he says, his expression raw. His comment completely derails me. It's like he's punched me hard in the stomach, winding and, w winding and wounding me. And the vision comes to mind of a small, frightened, copper-haired, gray-eyed boy in dirty, mismatched, ill-fitting clothes. It does, I say without guile, because it's the truth. I'm just trying to establish a career, and I don't want to trade on your name. I have to do something, Christian. I can't stay imprisoned at a scala over, or the new house with nothing to do. I'll go crazy. I'll suffocate. I've always worked, and I enjoy this. This is my dream job. It's all I've ever wanted. But d doing this doesn't mean I love you less. You are the world to me. My throat swells and tears prick the back of my eyes. I must not cry. Not here. I repeat it over and over in my head. I must not cry. I must not cry. He stares at me, saying nothing. Then a frown crosses his face as if he's considering what I've said. I suffocate you. His voice is bleak, and it's an echo of a question he's asked me before. No. Yes. No. This is such an exasperating conversation, not one that I want to have he now, here. I close my eyes and rub my forehead, trying to fathom how we got to this. Look, we were talking about my name. I want to keep my name here because I want to put some distance between you and me. But only here. That's all. You know everyone thinks I got the job because of you. When the reality is, I stop when his eyes widen. Oh no, it is because of him. Do you want to know why you got the job, Anastasia? Anastasia, shit. What, what do you mean? He shifts in his chair as if stealing himself. Do I want to know? The management here gave you Hyde's job to babysit. They didn't want the expense of hiring a senior executive when the company was mid-sale. They had no idea what the new owner would do with it once it passed into ownership, into his ownership. And wisely, they didn't want an expensive redundancy. So they gave you Hyde's job to caretake until the new owner. He pauses, and his lips twitch in an ironic smile. Namely, me took over. Holy crap. Why are you, what are you saying? So it was because of him? Fuck, I'm horrified. His, he smiles and shakes his head at my alarm. Relax, you've more than risen to the challenge. You've done very well. There's the teeniest hint of pride in his voice, and it's almost my undoing. Oh, I murmur incoherently, reeling from this news. I sit right back in my chair, open-mouthed, staring at him. He shifts again. I don't want to suffocate you, Anna. I don't want to put you in a gilded cage. Well, he pauses, his face darkening. Well, the rational part of me doesn't. He strokes his chin thoughtfully as his mind concocts some plan. Oh, where is he going with this? Christian looks up suddenly, as if he's had a eureka moment. So one of the reasons I'm here, apart from dealing with my errant wife, he says, narrowing his eyes, is to discuss what I'm going to do with this company. Errant wife? I am not an errant, and I'm not an asset. I scowl at Christian again, and the threat of tears subsides. 
So what are your plans? I inclined my head to one side, mirroring him, and I can't help my, sar my sarcastic tone. His lips twitched with the hint of a smile. Whoa, change of mood again. How can I ever keep up with the M Mr. Mercutio? I'm changing the name of the company to Gray Publishing. Holy shit. And in a year's time, it will be yours. Oh, and in a year's time, it will be yours. My mouth drops open once more. Why drew this time? This is my wedding present to you. I shut my mouth and open it, trying to articulate something, but there's nothing there. My mind is blank. So do I need to change the name to Steel Publishing? He's serious. Holy fuck. Christian, I whisper when my brain finally reconnects with my mouth. You gave me a watch. I can't run a business. He tilts his head to one side and gives me a sen censorious, a censorious, censorious frown. I ran my own business from the age of 21. But you're you, control freak and whiz kid extraordinaire. Geez, Christian, you ma you majored in economics at Harvard before you dropped out. At least you have some idea. I sold paint and cable ties for three years on a part-time basis, for heaven's sake. I've seen so little of the world, and I know no next to nothing. My voice rises, growing louder and higher as I complete my tirade. You're also the, well, the most well-read person I know, he counters earnestly. You have a good book. You love a good book. You couldn't leave your job while we were on our honeymoon. You read how many manuscripts? Four? Five, I whisper. And you wrote full reports on all of them. You're a very bright woman, Anastasia. I'm sure you'll manage. Are you crazy? Crazy for you, he whispers. And I snort because it's the only expression I can manage. He narrows his eyes. You'll be a laughing stock, buying a company for the little woman who has only had a full-time job for a few for a few months of her adult life. Do you think I give a fuck what people think? Besides, you won't be on your own. I gape at him. He really has lost his marbles this time. Christian, I... I put my head in my hands. My emotions have been through a ringer. Is he crazy? And from somewhere dark and deep inside, I have this sudden inappropriate need to laugh. When I look up at him again, his eyes widen. Something amusing you, Miss Steele? Yes, you. His eyes widen further, shocked but also amused. Laughing at your husband? That will never do. And you're biting your lip. His eyes darken in that way. Oh no, I know that look. Sultry, seductive, salacious. No, 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 not here. Don't even think about it, I warn. Alarm, clear in my voice. Think about what, Anastasia? I know that look. We're at work. He leans forward, his eyes glued to mine, molten gray and hungry. Holy shit, I swallow instinctively. We're in a small, reasonably soundproofed office with a lock... Oh, we're in a small, reasonably soundproofed office with a lockable door, he whispers. Gross moral turpitude. I enunciate each word carefully. Not with your husband. With my boss's boss's boss, I hiss. You're my wife. Christian, no, I mean it. You can fuck me seven shades of Sunday this evening, but not now. Not here. He blinks and narrows his eyes once more. Then unexpectedly, he laughs. <laughs> seven shades of Sunday? He arches an eyebrow, intrigued. I may hold you to that, Miss Steele. Oh, stop with the Miss Steele. I snap and thumb the desk, startling us both. And thump the desk, startling us both. For heaven's sake, Christian, if it means so much to you, I'll change my name. His mouth pops open as he inhales sharply, and then he grins, a radiant, all teeth showing, joyous grin. Wow. Good. He claps his hands, and all of a sudden he stands. What now? Mission accomplished. Now I have work to do, if you'll excuse me, Miss Gray. God, this man is so maddening. But. But what, Miss Gray? I sag. Just go. I intend to. I'll see you this evening. I'm looking forward to Seven Shades of Sunday. I scowl. Oh, oh, and I have a stack of business-related social engagements coming up, and I'd like you to accompany me. I gape at him. Will you just go? I'll have Andrea call Hannah to put the dates in your calendar. There are some people you need to meet. You should get Hannah to handle your schedule from now on. Okay, I mumble, completely bemused, bewildered, and shell-shocked. He leans over my desk. What now? I am caught up. I'm caught in his hypno hypnotic gaze. Love doing business with you, Miss Gray. He leans in closer as I sit paralyzed, and he plants a soft, tender kiss on my lips. Later's baby, he murmurs. He stands abruptly, winks at me, and leaves. I lay my head on my desk, feeling like I've been run over by a freight tra train. The freight train that is my beloved husband. He has to be the most fear frustrating, annoying, contrary man on the planet. I sit up and frantically rub my eyes. What if I had just agreed to? Okay, Anna Gray, running sip, I mean, Gray Publishing. The man is insane. There's a knock on the door, and Hannah pokes her head around. You okay? She asks. I just stare at her. She frowns. I know you don't like me doing this, but can I make you some tea? I nod. Twinning's English breakfast. Week in black? 
I nod, coming right up, Anna. I stare blankly at my computer screen, still in shock. How can I make him understand? Email. From Anastasia Steele. Subject, not an asset! Explanation mark. Date, June 22nd, 2011, 2.23 p.m. To Christian Gray. Mr. Gray, next time you come and see me, make an appointment so I can at least have some prior warning of your adolescent overbearing megalomania. Yours. Anastasia Gray. Please note name. Editor, sip. <laughs> From Christian Gray. Subject, Seven Shades of Sunday. Date, August 22nd, 2011, 2.34 p.m. To Anastasia Steele. Dear... My dear Miss Gray, emphasis on my. What can I say in my defense? I was in the neighborhood. And no, you are not an asset. You are my beloved wife. As ever, you make my day. Christian Gray, CEO and overbearing megalomaniac, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. He's trying to be funny, but I am not in a mood to laugh. I take a deep breath and go back to my correspondence. Christian is quiet when I climb into the car that evening. Hi, I murmur. Hi, he responds warily, as he should. Disrupt anyone else's work today? I ask sweetly. I ask too sweetly. A ghost of a smile crosses his face. Only Flynn's. Oh. Next time you go to see him, I'll have you. I'll give you a list of topics I want covered. I hiss. You seem out of sorts, Miss Gray. I glare steadily at the backs of Ryan's and Sawyer's heads in front of me. Christian shifts beside me. Hey. He says softly and reaches for my hand. All afternoon, when I should have been con concentrating on work, I was trying to figure out what to say to him. But I became angrier and angrier with each passing hour. I've had enough of his cavalier, petulant, and frankly childish behavior. I snatch my hand out of his in a cavalier, petulant, and childish manner. You're mad at me, he whispers. Yes, I hiss. Folding my arms protectively across my body, I gaze out my window. He shifts beside me once more, but I will not let myself look at him. I don't understand why I'm so mad at him, but I am really fucking mad. As soon as we pull up to a, outside of Scala, I break protocol and leap out of the car with my briefcase. I stomp into the building, not checking to see who is following. Ryan scuttles into the foyer behind me and dashes to the elevator to press the call button. What? I snap. When I'm alongside him, his cheeks redden. Apologies, ma'am, he mutters. Christian comes and stands beside me to wait for the elevator, and Ryan retreats. So it's not just me you're mad at, Christian murmurs dryly. I glare up at him and see a trace of a smile on his lips. Are you laughing at me? I narrow my eyes. I wouldn't dare, he says, holding up his hands like I'm threatening him at gunpoint. He's in his navy suit looking crisp and clean with floppy sex hair and a guileless expression. You need a haircut, I mutter. Turning away from him, I step into the elevator. Do I? He says while brushing his hair off his forehead. He follows me in. Yes. I tap the code for our apartment into the key to the keypad. So you're talking to me now? Just. What exactly are you mad about? I need an indication. He asks cautiously. I turn and gape at him. Do you really have no idea? Surely for someone so bright you must be you must have an inkling. I can't believe you're that obtuse. He takes an alarm step back. You really are mad. I thought we had s sorted all this in your office, he murmurs, perplexed. Christian, I just cap capitulated to your petulant demands. That's all. The elevator doors open and I storm out. Taylor is standing in the hallway. He takes a step back and quickly shuts his mouth as I, st as I steam past him. Hi, Taylor, I mutter. Miss Gray, he murmurs. Dropping my briefcase in the hallway, I head into the great room. Miss Jones is at the stove. Good evening, Miss Gray. Oh, good evening, Miss Gray. Hi, Miss Jones, I mutter. I head straight to the fridge and pull out a bottle of white wine. Christian follows me into the kitchen and watches me like a hawk as I take a glass down from the cupboard. He removes his jacket and casually places it on the countertop. Do you want a drink? I ask super sweetly. No, thanks, he says, not taking his eyes off me. And I know that he's helpless. He does not know what to do with me. It's comical on one level and tragic on the other. Well, screw him. I'm having trouble locating my compassion itself since our meeting this afternoon. Slowly, he removes his tie and then opens the top button of his shirt. I pour myself a large glass of Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, whatever it is, and Christian runs a hand through his hair. When I turn around, Miss Jones has disappeared. Shit, she's my human shield. I take a slug of wine. Hmm, it tastes good. Stop this, Christian whispers. He takes the two steps between us, so he's standing in front of me. Gently, he tucks my hair behind my ear and caresses my earlobe with his fingertips, sending a shiver through me. Is that, is this what I've missed all day? His touch? I shake my head, causing him to release my ear and gaze up at him. Talk to me, he murmurs. What's the point? You don't listen to me. Yes, I do. You're one of the few people I do listen to. I take another swig of wine. Is this about your name? 
Yes and no. It's about how you dealt with the fact that I disagreed with you. I glare up at him, expecting him to be angered. His brows froze. Anna, you know I have issues. It's hard for me to let go where you're concerned. You know that. But I'm not a child, and I'm not an asset. I know, he sighs. Then stop treating me as though I am, I whisper, imploring him. He brushes the backs of his fingers down my cheek and runs the tip of his thumb across my bottom lip. Don't be mad. You're so precious to me, like a priceless asset, like a child. He whispers, a somber, reverent expression on his face. His words distract me. Like a child? Precious like a child? A child would be precious to him? I'm neither of those things, Christian. I'm your wife. If you were hurt that I wasn't going to take your name, you should have said. Hurt? He frowns deeply, and I know that he's exploring the possibility in his mind. He straightens suddenly, still frowning, and glances quickly at his wrist wristwatch. The architect will be here in just under an hour. We should eat. Oh, no. I groan inwardly. He hasn't answered me, and now I have to deal with Gia Matteo. My shitty day just got shittier. I scowl at Christian. This discussion isn't finished, I mutter. What else is there to discuss? You could sell the company. Christian sorts, snorts. Sell it. Yes. You think I'd find a buyer in today's market? How much did it cost you? It was relatively cheap. His tone is guarded. So if it folds? He smirks. Will survive, but I won't let it fold, Anastasia. Not while you're there. And if I leave? And do what? I don't know. Something else? You've already said this is your dream job. And forgive me if I'm wrong, but I promised before God, Reverend Walsh, and a congregation, congregation of our nearest and dearest to cherish you, uphold your hopes and dreams, and keep you safe at my side. Quoting your wedding vows to me is not playing fair. I've never promised to play fair where you're concerned. Besides, he adds, you've wielded your vows at me like a weapon before. I scowl. This is true. Anastasia, if you're still angry with me, take it out on me in bed later. His voice is suddenly low and full of sensual longing, his eyes heated. What? Bed? How? He smiles indulgently down at my expression. Is he expecting me to tie him up? Holy crap. Seven shades of Sunday, he whispers, looking forward to it. Whoa. Gail! He shouts abruptly, and four seconds later, Miss Jones appears. Where was she? Taylor's office? Listening? Oh, no. Mr. Gray? We'd like to eat now, please. Very good, sir. Christian doesn't take his eyes off me. He watches me vig vigilantly, as if I'm some exotic creature about to bolt. I take a sip of my wine. I think I'll join you in a glass. I think I'll join you in a glass, he says, sighing, and runs a hand through his hair again. You're not going to finish? No. I gaze down at my barely-touched plate of fettuccine to avoid Christian's darkening expression. Before he can say anything, I stand and clear our plates from the dining table. Gia will, be, Gia will be with us shortly, I mutter. Christian's mouth twists in an unhappy scowl, but he says nothing. I'll take those, Miss Gray, says Miss Jones as I walk into the kitchen. Thank you. You didn't like it? She asks, concerned. It was fine. I'm just not hungry. Giving me a small, sympathetic smile, she turns to clear my plate and put everything in the dishwasher. I'm going to make a couple of calls, Christian announces, giving me an assessing look before he disappears into a study. I let out a sigh of relief and head to our bedroom. Dinner was awkward. I'm still mad at Christian, and he doesn't seem to think he's done anything wrong, has he? My subconscious cocks an eyebrow at me and gazes benignly over her half-moon glasses. Yes, he has. He's made it even more awkward for me to work. He didn't wait to discuss this issue with me when we were in, a relative, in the relative privacy of our own home. How would he feel if I came barging into his office, laying down the law? And to cap it all, he wants to give me sip? How the hell could I run a company? I know next to nothing about business. I gaze out at the Seattle skyline bathed in the peak pearly pink light of dusk, and as usual, he wants to solve our differences in the bedroom, um, foyer, playroom, TV room, kitchen, countertop, stop! It always comes back to sex with him. Sex is his coping mechanism. I wonder, I wander into the bathroom and scowl at my reflection in the mirror. Coming back to the real world is hard. We managed to stake over all our differences while we were in our bubble because we were so wrapped up in each other. But now, briefly, I'm dragged back to my wedding, remembering my concerns that day, marrying in haste. No, I mustn't think like this. I knew he was Fifty Shades when I married him. I just have to hang in there and try to talk through this with him. I squint at myself in the mirror. I look pale, and now I have that woman to deal with. I'm wearing my gray pencil skirt and a sleeveless blouse. Right, my inner goddess skits out her harlot red nail polish. I undo two buttons, exposing a little cleavage. I wash my face, then carefully redo my makeup, applying more mascara than usual and putting extra gloss on my lips. Bending down, I brush my hair vigorously from root to tip. When I stand, my hair is a chestnut haze around my thump, my around me that tumbles to my breasts. I tuck it artfully behind my ears and go in search of my pumps rather than my flats.
When I reemerge into the great room, Christian has the house plan spread out on the dining table. He has music playing through the sound system. It stops me in my tracks. Miss Gray, he says warmly, then looks quizzically at me. What's this? I ask. The music is stunning. Freire's Requiem. You look different, he says, distracted. Oh, I've not heard it before. It's very calming, relaxing, he says, and raises an eyebrow. Have you done something to your hair? Brushed it, I mutter. I'm transported by the haunting voices. Abandoning the plans on the table, he walks toward me, a slow saunter in time to the music. Dance with me, he murmurs. To this, it's a requiem, I squeak, shocked. Yes. He pulls me into his arms and holds me, burying, burrowing his nose in my hair and swaying gently from side to side. He smells his heavenly self. Oh, I've missed him. I wrap my arms around him and fight the urge to cry. Why are you so infuriating? I hate fighting with you, he whispers. Well, stop being such an arse. He chuckles, and the captivating sound rever reverberates, reverberates through his chest. He tightens his hold on me. Arse? Ass. I prefer arse. You should. It suits you. He laughs once more and kisses the top of my head. A requiem? I murmur, a little shocked that we are dancing to it. He shrugs. It's just a lovely piece of music, Anna. Taylor coughs discreetly at the entranceway, and Christian releases me. Miss Mateo is here, he says. Oh, joy. Show her in, Christian says. He reaches over and clasps my hand as Gia, as Miss Gia Mateo enters the room. Okay, that was the end of chapter seven. We will pick up on chapter eight in the next video. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I post this immediately today because I know it's long overdue. But again, I hope you enjoyed your holidays. And uh, sorry about the construction that I had. That was just, it was overwhelming. But that's it for now. Until next time, guys. Reading by Re. Bye.